Chalam, 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 chalam. Greetings, brothers and sisters, in the faith of Yache Mesiaka. Give all praise to Ahaya Ashre Ahaya. Today, we are going to be looking at the name of salvation for all the world. We're going to look according to the precepts, as well as the Hebrew language to understand what the true name is. We are going to begin with Solomon, the king, seeing as though he was endowed with wisdom, as we are all well aware. And when you look at the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 17, he also was aware of the beginning and ends of the times. So what we're going to find is that it was prophesied that there will come a time when the name of the Father and the Son would be unknown to men. We're going to look into these things and look for the truth. Yes, indeed. Let's start with uh, Proverbs chapter 30. We can go from verse 1 to 3, please. Proverbs chapter 30. The words of Agor, the son of Jaquette, even the prophecy, the man spake unto Ithael, even unto Ithael and Yukal. And when you look at the Hebrew definitions, Agor is actually Solomon. It's a symbolic name for him. All right, continue. Surely I am more brutish than any man, and have not the understanding of a man. Now, of course, this is Solomon speaking. He's being facetious because he's showing that you would have to be brutish, like a man with no knowledge would not know the name of the Father and the Son. So that's why he's saying what he's saying before what he's about to say. I neither learn wisdom nor have the knowledge of the holy. Now this is very important because if you were a brutish man, you would not have knowledge of the holy. And now we're looking at verse 4 in Proverbs chapter 30. Who hath ascended up into heaven or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fist? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name? If thou canest tell. There we see they're talking about Allah I am. Right. And he said, if thou canst tell. Like, if you know it, what are their names? Right. Because it will come a time when we hit it. And it's interesting because according to prophecy, his name would be above every other name. And the only name on which one can be saved. Right. According to the scriptures, and we're going to look at these things. Let's start at Philippians chapter 2 and start at 9. All right, please. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. Wherefore, Allah also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. And this is the key verse that's amazing. And the scriptures are very clear. Through precepts, we get understanding according to Psalms 119. He had given him a name above every name. That's right. In the plainness and simplicity of the truth, that means no one else can have the same name as Christ in Scripture. Because his name is above every other name. And we can validate it through precepts. We have Acts chapter 4, verse 10 to 12. Acts chapter 4, verse 10. Be known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Yahshua HaMashiach of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom Elohim raised from the dead, even by him do this man stand before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. So there was none other name under heaven given among men at the time of these prophecies, which means no other man was given the name of salvation because it was above every other name and given to Christ for the purpose to differentiate him from others during that time. Hence, if anyone alleged the name of Christ is the same as other men, it could not have been the name of Christ. And for that reason... You would not see the name Yache in the Old or New Testament referring to another, which would bring confusion, and seeing that Allahim is not the author of confusion, this order was set in place. 
Nowadays, the word Yache may be pronounced in other languages, yet it's just by chance and not the actual Hebrew language being spoken. Also, men know not the name of Christ today and use the name lightly in these modern times amongst the true Hebrew speakers. It's powerful because we were told his name was Jesus. When you actually look at the scriptures, you'll find that Jesus is actually a Grecized rendition of the name Joshua. Right. And Jesus in the New Testament is the name of about at least two to three Israelites. And then Joshua is the name of about three to four Israelites in the Old Testament. Right. And then Yeshua. Yeshua is a rendition of Joshua. And right. it's also the name of about at least two Israelites in the Old Testament. Right. Also, it has been said that his name is Yeshaya or Ishi from the Old Testament. Right. And we will come to find that Ishi is the name of at least two or three other Israelites in the right. Old Testament. And then you have the name Isaiah, which is Yeshaya. A modern rendition of the name of Isaiah and also another Israelite. All these names, Jesus, Joshua, Yeshua, Yeshaya, Yashaya, Yahawashai, Yehoshua, right. so are names of multiple Israelites, right. which would make the prophecy untrue. Hence, it helps us understand that it's not his name. Right. Now, what's interesting, the root word of some of those them. names actually contains the name of the Savior. Right. For your scriptural edification, you have Numbers chapter 14, verse 6. You'll find the name Joshua there. And then Haggai chapter 1, verse 1. The name Joshua is also there. So that's shown that's multiple names. That means that can't be the name of the son of Elohim because multiple people have that name. And then the name Yeshua. You have Ezra chapter 3, verse 2. And then you have another one in, in verse 8. And then you have another Yeshua in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 17. So that shows those are multiple Israelites. So that can be the name of the Savior. And then the name Jesus, even for the New Testament, you have Hebrews chapter 4, verse 8. That's talking about Joshua in that verse. And then you have Colossians chapter 4, verse 11, talking about another man, Jesus. And it's interesting, if you pull up the concordance in G2424, that's the concordance number for Jesus. Okay. Please. Okay. G2424. Uh, eosis. And it means Yah is salvation. Right. They're given the Hebrew meaning. So how many people they have there? One is Jesus, the son of Elohim, the savior of mankind. And we know that's inaccurate because the scriptures said that his name is above every other name and there's no other name under heaven by which man may be saved. All right. All right. The second is Jesus Barabbas. And that's the man that they had traded for Yache when they were going to crucify him. Right. Then you also have Joshua, with the famous captain of the Israelites. Then you have Jesus, the son of Eliezer. And that's another one. And then you have Jesus, surnamed Justice. And that's the one in Colossians chapter 4. Right. So you see, just in the New Testament, you have at least three people. As you have the Barabbas, Joshua, the son of Nun, and uh, Jesus, surnamed Justice. Right. So according to the scriptures, that can't be the name because other people have the name. Right. And the word Joshua is actually, if you look at uh, Hebrew concordance number H3091, that's the Hebrew word for Joshua. And we encourage you, please go to the website and download the Hebrew document where you can get the breakdown of the Hebrew words and for the particular on the name of the Savior is about from number 130 to 134 with the scriptural and word breakdown of the names so you can have it to look at physically right in front of you. Now the word Joshua H3091 is Yao Chewa or Yao Chewe. The root word of these words is Che because it has to do with salvation. 
Now, interestingly, Joshua's name actually is calling out for salvation. And in the document, you see that his name is Yao Shoa. And it can also be pronounced Yao Chewe. Chewe, it means to, to scream for help. And the root word for that word, where they have Shoa. In Yoruba, Shoa means seeking, saving, or freedom. He's crying out to Yah. And he's seeking salvation from him, trying to find freedom from him. And it means to scream out for help, like a hollow. When you look in the concordance and when you get the document, you'll see more of that information there. To see that his name is calling for help and he's calling on to Yah. Right. And the word Yah is that one. You still use that in Igbo to this day. Like Yah means him. Or when you say Onye, that means that one or that person. And Ahaya is Yah, hence a lot of the Hebrew names like Adonaya, Alaya. These names are all given homage to the Most High, Ahaya, Alahayam. So Joshua's name is calling out for salvation. Right. And this word here in H3091 is where you might hear people say Yahawashai in the Americanish Hebrew, which is not actually the real Hebrew. Because the Hebrew is retained among the Bantu speakers. The way to actually say Joshua in Hebrew is Yahshua. Or Yahushua. And the word Yeshua is H3442. That's the other rendition of Joshua. H3442. Right. And that word is Yahshua. He is salvation. Yes. Or he is salvation. The difference with this one and Joshua is the H in the Yah. Because Joshua is Yahuchewe. And this one is Yachewe. Or Yashua. Depending on what you're trying to say in the Hebrew, because variation in pitch and change in pronunciation can change the meaning of the word in the ancient language. Remember, that's the name of multiple Israelites. Right. This is Yahshua that they call Yahshua. Right, showing yes. that that's not the name of the Savior because his name is above every other name. There would not be anyone else that has the same name. The other names that are used are Yeshaya. If you look at H3469, you can find that name in First Chronicles chapter 2, verse 31, and chapter 4, verse 20. The word in the English is Ishi, and in the concordance it says, He saves me. That's the Brownos Briggs. The uh, Strong's concordance says saving. Right. Now it's interesting, you notice Joshua has to do with salvation. Right. And that word Ishi, they say Yeshaya. When in the true Hebrew language, the word is Yacheya, it's more so saying, my Savior. So you have Joshua, Yachewe, which is the name of a couple of Israelites. And then you have Yacheya, which is the name of about, what is it, about three or four Israelites in the Old Testament there. Seeing as there was the name of multiple Israelites, it shows that it's not his name because his name is supposed to be above every other name. And... If you look at Hosea chapter 2 verse 16, it says that in that day they shall call me Ishi and call me no more Bali. The word Ishi there actually means the head. And that's still an Igbo word to this day. Ishi, that's the Igbo word for head still. So Ishi, that's the word for head, like when we talk about the king. So that verse wasn't saying that his name would be Ishi. It was showing that we will call him Ishi, acknowledging that he is our head, our champion. Or our king sitting upon the throne of David. And you also have Isaiah, which is Yacheya or Yacheyao or Yacheyawa. In the uh, Hebrew, if you look at H3470, and why I pronounced it differently? Because there's two different spellings of it. There's one that's Yacheyao, and then there's one that says Yacheya. Okay? And it means. Yah has saved. And we know Isaiah is a former prophet and is actually the name of a few other Israelites which lets us know according to Philippians 2 and 9 and Acts 4 and 12 that that's not the name of the Savior because other people have the name. And for the scriptures, for the other people that are named Isaiah, you have Isaiah 1 and 1. That's the Isaiah we're most familiar with. And then Ezra 8 and 7. The way it says Jeshiah, that's another Isaiah. 
And this is the amazing thing because all their names are talking about salvation, being saved from Yah. That's right. And their names contains the root word of the name of the Savior. Page 3467, the word is Yache. In the concordance, the Yiddish language, it says Yasha, but Ah has been gracious to reveal that the Yiddish is not Hebrew. Right. And then you might hear in the Americanish Hebrew, they say Yashai, but that's not actually Hebrew either because I was very gracious in that though we went into captivity, he did not suffer us to lose the language entirely. Right. And we actually spoke Hebrew before we came to the Americas. And the Hebrew language has still been retained in the Bantu languages of West Africa, particularly the Igbo language, which is the root language of the Bantu languages of West Sub-Saharan Africa. You can even substantiate that we spoke Hebrew with the church pillars in South Carolina. Yeah. That's actually South Georgia, South Savannah, Georgia. Georgia. Thank yeah. you. Those church pillars had Hebrew letters on it. And to further glorify Ahaya, we also still have substantial evidence that our brothers of the Northern Kingdom here in America spoke Hebrew because of words like Miami. Right. The word Miami means big river. Right. And Miami. That comes from the Hebrew word for water, me, me, me. And then you have Minnesota, right. Right. which is actually, uh, it means many waters, because in Igbo, the word that's used for water there is midi or mini. And the word sota, sota means to, to flow, like it'll be flowing out. And hence, you can look at, there's many rivers, a lot of water in Minnesota. Right. Hence, it's called Minnesota. That's Hebrew. <laughs> you can really trace the Israelites right. and the Hebrew speakers. Right. So, I has been very gracious to let us retain the language, and in these last days, he's revealed it to show that we actually still do speak Hebrew. And again, there's a document on the website that has over 100 words showing Hebrew is retained among the Bantu speakers. And with the name of the Savior, Anytime you look in the Old Testament and you see the word Savior, the root word there is going to be Yache, right. age 3467, throughout the whole scriptures. And it's amazing because through the Igbo language, we get confirmation of what's already shown through the concordance and the scriptures. Now, we know Hebrew names define a person. They're descriptive. Like, for example, the word for a camel. The word today in English, camel, comes from the Hebrew word gameolo, which means to labor. Because in Igbo, ga means to go, me means to do, olu, work. So it's gameolo, means going to do work, it's for work. Hence, Adam described the camel. And then to more further times from the beginning of the world, you have Moses. The woman drew him out of the water. And she called him Muchi, Kamuchi. That actually means to draw out. And his name was prophetic, of course, because he was the one that drew the children of Israel out of Egypt. That's right. And even Joshua's original name, his name was initially Oche. And he saves. And he was destined to be the one that would lead the children of Israel into the land of Canaan. And when that blessing came upon him, Moses changed his name to Yahweh. Yahuchewe. He was signifying that Yahweh would be the one to lead him because he put the Yah. And we know in Joshua chapter 5, verse 13 to 15, that Yahweh came down and met Joshua before he went into the land of Canaan. That's right. So the names are very prophetic and powerful. And we know the Savior was to be the one to save all the world. So let's look at the definition to see if this word describes him. Can we read the definition? This is H3467. It says a primitive root. Concordance calls this a primitive root. Right. But in Igbo, we know the primitive root of this primitive root, right. which is Che. All right? When che means in Igbo today, like you say, uh, it means uh, protect us, save us, guard us, help us. Like you have somebody that plays a soccer, you know, you have the goalie that has to protect the rim, I mean protect the net, they call it, oh, chebe, chebe. The, the word still has its use 
from the ancient times to this day. So the definition. Properly to be open, wide or free, that is by implication to be safe. Causatively to free or succor, avenging, defend, deliver or deliverer, help, preserve, rescue, be safe, bring, having salvation or bring salvation. And that was interesting that it says to bring salvation because Joshua's name is Yahweh, which is calling for help, a hollowing for help, and Yahweh's name is bringing the salvation. <laughs> so it's through the linguistics. And the scriptures, it's just amazing that I has been gracious to reveal this at this time. And it means save or savior, get victory. This describes a Christ. And to add upon it in Igbo, to this day, the word yache is a sentence. It means let him save. Yache be'ayin, let him save us. Yache be'ayin. Let me touch on something before Please. you go. Please. I'm going to reveal the mystery that Elohim revealed unto me. Alright. He said, I am the root and the offspring of Jesse. Alright. That's Revelation chapter 22. Alright. Now, there's a mystery in the root. Alright. Because if you figure out the root word, you find out his name. Mm. And also, the other, the offspring of Jesse, in which that's a whole nother topic. But when we get into the, the birth of Yache, you're going to understand the other mystery. He was revealing two mysteries at one time. Oh, wow. All right. The root word. <laughs> I'm the root and the offspring of Jesse. It was going to let you understand it. That was Yache speaking directly in Revelations. Wow. Telling us how to find him. All right. The root. And here we are looking at the root word of these names. <laughs> the name of salvation. Yache. Now, in Matthew 1 and 21, it says, And he shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yache. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now, remember, Hebrew words, the names mean your purpose. Right. Just like Moses, Mushi, meant to draw out. That's right. Right, because she drew him out of the water. That's right. He said, for he shall save his people. <laughs> he shall bring salvation. <laughs> right. <laughs> and he shall save his people, or he shall bring salvation. In our language, we understand that. Right. Yache. So he shall call his name. Let him save, for he shall save his people. Right. His name is Yache. Right. And that's the name no one else has. In the scriptures. It's the only name you can be saved by under heaven. And we know, sadly, they got hands on the records and they put what they put in there. And I had so gracious that the precepts right. that he said he is the root, that was profound because it's the root word. Right. And then the precepts saying that there's no other name by which men can be saved. That's right. And that his name is above every other name. Nobody else has the name Yache. That's right. <laughs> so we hope this has been edifying for you, brothers and sisters. And pray about it. Right. And try the spirit. Right. Ask Ahaya. Is his son's name Yache? May he be magnified. So praise Ahaya. We hope this has been edifying for you. And you have our email and we hope you're subscribed on the website and get an opportunity to download the records and right. get to interact some more. Alright. Shalom. Shalom.